Well, hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you won't mind uh, putting up with me for the next hour. Uh, so, uh, thank you to Elizabeth and everyone here for allowing me to come and talk to you about this. It's a topic I'm quite passionate about, uh, as I am with a lot of things, if you keep up with me on uh, social media and everywhere else. Um, I gave this talk, you might have seen at the um, youth conference that was done back in May by the Family History Federation and the Society of Genealogists. So if you were there, it's going to be near enough a repeat of that. But if you haven't seen it then, then this is going to be new for you. Uh, so I'm going to get started and I'm going to share my slides. And hopefully this will work. It worked beforehand, so I'm just hoping that it will work. Okay, so I'm hoping people can see that. Um, Looks good. My message in the fine. That'll do. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. So my obviously, I am obviously an eighteen-year-old young genealogist. I come from Ireland, and I started in genealogy when I was thirteen. Although at the time I didn't really know that I was doing genealogy. I only called doing it the family tree. Uh, later uh, on, about two years later, but I know that I was actually doing genealogy for two years already and will be doing it for many years prior, or sorry, many years more. Um, and uh, I was going on one of my ramblings on Twitter, just trying to figure out, uh, you know, what I should do for this youth conference that was coming up, because at the time, that's what this presentation was going to be for. So I didn't have a clue what to do. So I just uh, asked around for a bit of uh, inspiration. And uh, Dutch genealogist Yvette Hoytink uh, suggested how to get older genealogists to the table rather than the often heard how we get young genealogists to the table. And then followed up with, or better yet, how to build a bigger table. And that is what I want to talk to you all about today. And it's to try and build a bigger table where both young genealogists and older genealogists, and before I go any further, I do not have an, a an age uh, range for what I think fits in, excuse me, uh, both ranges uh, or both, both sets. Uh, you can probably have your own picture in your head because I might suggest one thing to you and you might come back and say, oh, but I think it's this. So I think it would be very much open to people's imagination as to what um, these age ranges would be. But now that I've said that, because I forgot to do that last time, um, I'm, I pose the question, do I think that things need to change kind of as they are? And I said, yes, but not in all aspects. And this is going to be the main topic uh, of conversation today, and that's social media. I'm sure most of us uh, use uh, social media, um, you know, sparingly or regularly. Uh, it could be anything like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, TikTok, which sometimes people use that, and Pinterest, or different things. Um, but I want to kind of highlight something to you. So while I was kind of researching for this presentation, I wanted to kind of include so like a visual aid. So kind of a lot of people that I have met is obviously going to be on Twitter. So this is a little Venn diagram uh, that I <laughs> just quickly pulled together. Uh, of And this is going to be kind of where I have seen what kind of in what end of the uh, spectrum in terms of a, a older or younger genealogists, what kind of platforms they use uh, when they sort of talking about genealogy or connecting with others about genealogy. So for older genealogists, I tend to have seen them use either forums, Facebook, or Twitter. And I put Facebook and Twitter in the middle because I think those are the two main focuses for what um, is used to communicate with us on genealogy because it could be a Facebook group or if you're on Twitter and you kept up with me, you would have known that there was a new feature launched earlier this year, late last year, 
called Twitter communities, which is the Twitter version of Facebook groups, near enough, as probably the best way to describe them. So, and then you have the younger genealogists who use uh, platforms like Reddit, TikTok, Discord, Instagram, and you can kind of see that for what I've seen is all the genealogists are trying to think, oh, well, what are we doing wrong? Or is there anything we're doing wrong when it comes to sort of communicating with or trying to get ourselves out to young people? And partially, I think, it's to do with the platforms that are utilised. For instance, I'm a member of two societies. I won't name what ones because, you know, um, uh, I, I just don't think it'd be appropriate. But two, I'm a member of two societies, and one of them uses a forum, the other one uses Facebook groups, and has a very active Twitter presence. The other one has a very active Facebook presence, not a big presence on Twitter. And then you have kind of, then you can kind of see that all the genealogists are trying to have their kind of playground. But for me, as for what I use um, for social media, I have platforms on. Uh, well, I have an account on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, but out of those four that I use very regularly is Twitter and Facebook, because that is where, you know, it's been established. That's what has been used a lot. That's what has been the tried and tested method of doing genealogy on social media, be it a Twitter chat via Ancestry Hour, or Gen Chat, or House History Hour. There's something for everyone. Or Facebook groups to connect on whether it's so like a niche topic or whether it's a very broad topic. So whether it's a particular uh, townland, because I'm part of a Facebook group for Bahola, which is where a lot of my father's ancestry comes from. So I'm a member of that Facebook group, or I'm a member of a uh, uh, kind of more general Irish genealogy group to see if I can offer help to any others, uh, uh, offer advice or tips, that kind of thing. And Twitter, I find, is a good place to kind of keep up on any kind of news relating to genealogy. Or talks is actually another good place. Um, but I think if old genealogists want to want to kind of appeal to the younger end of the spectrum. There has to be a utilization of platforms that they're not, not so much familiar with, that they use somewhat frequently that might entice them to use it. For instance, I might be less inclined to use a forum provided by a society that is, uh, that there's, you know, a number of uh, steps to get on, and if it's not, uh, you know, browser friendly on my phone, you know, it, it mightn't seem that appealing to me, and it might just seem like, oh, is it really worth trying to figure out how this thing works? I do, I do use forums. I just haven't in a while. Or would I be more inclined to try and do some, or try and access something that I can get as an app on my phone, or that is like Facebook? You know, I, I'm more, I'm probably more inclined to you to use a Facebook group for a society or for an organization rather than an online forum because I have because if it's not browser friendly I probably just wouldn't use it. Um, so as I said, you have to try and find common ground between um, you know the older genealogists and the younger genealogists. And as I said, Facebook and Twitter are the tried and tested methods. But well, how about trying something that isn't tried and tested as much, or that you haven't tried yourself? For instance, uh, using social media, uh, but use social media, but one that suit your aim or your audience best. And what I mean by this is, it's all well and good if you're using social media. You know, you have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, an Instagram page, a Pinterest page, a TikTok, whatever. But 
you have to think is am i spreading myself too thin by going on many um platforms uh because obviously it's it's all well and good if you're on many platforms but if you get if you're struggling with all of them and then you're thinking but why aren't any of them coming to us it it's to me it's worse if you kind of spread yourself over a load instead of own it down to a few and do it well because if you don't kind of do it well you you're, you're then scratching your head thinking right we've signed up for five social networks why isn't any of this working and that'll be why so for instance one thing that i've talked about many a time if you're if you're familiar with me and that's using discord which is a community like uh text texting and voice call video call feature all into a server which is kind of just a little hub for whatever you want uh i won't go into too much about discord perhaps at the moment or maybe later on because i'm developing presentations and materials that um talk about that more um so i'll leave that bit there but for friendly history societies i think it'd be useful because uh i know and i will apologize now i do sometimes um <laughs> stray off into a completely different point so i will try and stop myself if i catch uh myself doing it um but take for instance the family history society they uh, obviously have a membership and they're trying to, you know, entice people to come and be a part of, you know, their society. But one thing I particularly like about societies or communities of some kind is the engagement. So Discord would be fantastic for a family user society, say, if it was trying to have a method for members to connect with each other um, and not have to kind of look into how uh, into so like booting up a form uh, on the on your website or try and figure out how that all works. So it's mainly trying to work it so to your advantage and to your aim and your audience. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so another thing was private server could be for the society could be used as a, as a member benefit. That was in a roundabout way of what I was talking about just a minute ago. And the um, the other thing is to give other platforms a go to see how they work out for you. You know, whether it's trying to see how Facebook works for your society, boot up a Facebook page, use that for a while. Does it work? Yes, no, maybe. Um, and you do that, obviously, by testing. And this is my little method. So you can take a screen grab of this slide if you want. I don't mind. Um, so experiment, exercise, and evaluate is my kind of EEE method. So experiment by trying out other platforms, exercise them by putting them into practice and testing them out, and evaluate whether or not <coughs> excuse me, uh, that venture was successful. So that is how I'd recommend, you know, someone trying out, and it doesn't have to be society, it can be any, just trying out to see whether or not this um, method or this particular social network, be it Facebook, Twitter, whatever it may be, works for your society. Uh, you know, you have to kind of take a look as well, the aspects of what each one does. For example, Instagram is a more visual platform. So if you want to share, you know, historic images of you know a local area if you're a local area uh family history society um or if you like writing a lot um you know facebook might be the one for you as it can fit a uh, large amount of characters in a post or if you like something short and concise tw twitter would be uh something for you or if you uh but obviously if you were trying to share links to um uh talks or something i wouldn't recommend instagram as the only place that you can share links is on your account profile you can't actually share them in posts that's kind of the one reason i like facebook a little more than instagram um and that's the first part 
And the second part is something that I've covered in a previous presentation to a different extent. Uh, if you had seen my um, presentation, uh, genealogy from a young genealogist perspective, you would have seen something along of what I might be able to, what I'm going to talk about now in a minute. So genealogy is a two-way street, but in some cases it isn't. For instance, um, you know, everyone has something to bring or offer to the table, whether it is offering a new idea or perhaps offering advice on how to find something. And I find that Twitter, I, 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 in, in this instance, I don't really um, care uh, whether I'm being biased or not, uh, because I have, I, I call Twitter my genealogy hub, my home uh, for genealogy, because I just find that it's, that it's a hus it's a vibrant community full of genealogists of every background that can help you, uh, you know, get the answer you need um, to a, a dilemma or a question. Or even uh, just to, uh, I think it was just last week I was asking for, um, or no, just today, even, not last week, uh, I was asking for thoughts on how, um, you know, a second monitor would work because at the moment I only have one external monitor uh, and my laptop screen. And I was thinking, you know, have people found a second monitor uh, useful? And the answer was a resounding yes. So <laughs> it's just little things like that kind of. And just I find that Twitter is a good place to kind of get the word out about something. So if you have a talk or something going on, you know, I find that that's a good place to share it as well because. Um, it 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 just works for what I find, but um, I'm just seeing that next one. Okay, so I'll ignore that bit for a minute. And I say it's a two way street because I think for some people, I won't say young or old because I'm sure there's it happened. It, you can blame uh, both sides a little, um, but. You know, I started uh, 2017, I I was 13 and I um, didn't have any f real friends at the time. I didn't really have anyone that I could share my interest in. So a lot of the time I kind of kept it to myself. And just unfortunately, the way it went for me, I was not the popular kid. So uh, I just kind of, you know, uh, sat by myself a lot and uh, did my own thing. And, uh, you know, I would sometimes get picked on a little for uh, my interest, and one of these interests was genealogy. And, you know, I did get kind of um, kind of a release when I eventually found Twitter and found that it was a nice place to go and to talk to others like-minded, be it my own age or be it uh, young, younger, older than me, slightly way older, I don't know, any age any, anyway. But for me, that was my kind of getaway. I was able to kind of find my community. But for others I've met, haven't had the same ex uh, kind of warm experience. You know, some would say the some stories I've heard is that, um, oh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, you know, for instance, so like they would kind of just get, very sarcastic responses to kind of things that they'd be asking about, you know, they could put a question up in a Facebook group and then get a pretty snarky answer back. Or, uh, for instance, I'll give you uh, uh, one of mine. I was told, I've been told on a number of times I'm not a genealogist. I have openly admitted, I may not be a professional, but I see, personally, I see anyone who does genealogy as a genealogist or family historian or something like that. Uh, another time was, um, it was my first interview and uh, is my first, sorry, my first live interview and it, and it had gone okay. You know, I was a bit trembly during the interview. I, I was trying to, I, I was trying to recall the info because I was getting asked about questions about Irish genealogy. So I wanted to kind of know my stuff before I went in. So I was just trying to, you know, take it easy, take it carefully responding with what I knew uh, and just opening up about it. And 
afterwards, um, because I'm in Ireland, you obviously have to speak Irish um, when you're in school. And uh, there was a comment on that interview left in Irish. And lo and behold, I was able to translate it. And I thought it was something complimentary. When I did actually translate it, it was actually saying that I didn't know what I was talking about and that I should have. Uh, but uh, I, I just didn't know what I was talking about, according to this person. And it was primarily because my voice is trembling, trying to make sure that I got all the info right. And um, as well, if you know me uh, talking about Finder Group as well, I've gotten you know numerous comments uh, aimed at me. Kind of, I had one kind of, um, oh, don't listen to this at the time I was seventeen. So don't listen to the seventeen-year-old. Uh, I can't believe you're putting so much uh, reliance on what this person's saying. That sort of thing, and. You know, for me, I take negative comments um, to heart sometimes. That's just the way I'm <laughs> wired in my brain. Um, but eventually I got over it. But all I want you to think about is if, if another young genealogist who didn't have that kind of support system of, I, of kind of people who were uh, willing to kind of hear you out and kind of uh, appreciate you for kind of being a young genealogist in that community. How do you think they might feel if they got a pretty negative uh, response or kind of just negativity and just kind of, oh, you don't know anything because you're a young genealogist? And I think that's the problem with stereotypes, you know, they exist in many places in the world. But for genealogy, it's the idea that, oh, your, uh, genealogy isn't an, isn't a young person's hobby, you know. It'll only be a passing uh, a passing interest, or they might be interested in it for a day, because uh, you you might know what I mean if I say kind of you know when you have an interest in something and you get really excited about something in that day, and then the next day you just kind of feel hmm, I'm not really that interested in it. That's the idea that some people have of young genealogists that they don't have interest, that they can't do the research. One response I did get from someone uh, about young genealogists was that we apparently only listen to podcasts and are interested in the uh, software side of things and that young genealogists could not do proper research. And I will be honest, that annoyed me a little because it was just, you know, blindly stating uh, that, oh, I must be right because that's all I've seen. And um, when I responded to this person saying, I'm sorry to hear that you, uh, uh, well, I had it, mm, excuse me, um, you know, where had you seen this or kind of where had you heard of it? And this person just kind of said, oh, on Twitter or on Twitter threads or something. And when I asked kind of saying, oh, I'd, I'd like to see, could you show me? I got nothing back. So that was just kind of the idea of what this person had in their head about young genius. And that's the problem. As long as that stereotype lasts, and ageism, whatever way you want to put it, uh, lasts, you know, I think there's always going to be a, a young genealogist that kind of gets, you know, put down for their interest and kind of told them why you, you, you don't know what you're on about, you know, you're a young person, you don't know anything, that sort of thing. And, you know, I've seen society say openly, you know, oh, how do we get young people into genealogy? How do we attract people? And I mean, the simplest answer is to kind of work with the young genealogists that are out there and let us try and help you give some guidance. I mean, I'm some I'm I'm somewhat of an anomaly in in the sense that I'm not a typical 18-year-old, 17, or well, sorry, 18. And think of my own age, right? Uh, like I'm not your typical eighteen-year-old. You know, I I mainly use kind of Facebook, Twitter. I don't I usually despise Instagram. Um, you know, I I I I'm not kind of you know I don't keep up with current trends, whatever uh, young people are into. I'm not really that into myself. I'm uh, interested in probably many other things <laughs> they wouldn't be interested in, and. I, one thing I think as well is, you know, you don't see many young people in the um, genealogy sphere because 
they might know where to go firstly and secondly you know eh, some might want to kind of ask themselves and kind of you know kind of not so much shyly but just kind of don't really want to ask openly you know oh how do i do this or i don't know that i've forgotten my train of thought on that one so i'll stop that there instead of trying to ramble and eventually get back to where i was but you know for a young person doing genealogy they might not necessarily want to share with their peers because of you know what they might get in you know response be it backlash or be it um or, or, or be it just picking on i mean that's what i got so i mean you know it i eventually got over it, but it was just it was just so horrible that um at one point I almost didn't do um, Daniel's genealogy. So I, to give you a quick bit of context, I started Daniel's genealogy back in June 2019, and at that time, I, at the time, I only went by my pseudonym, which was Daniel's genealogy. I didn't have a photo of me out there. I didn't share my full name, not like I am today, because I'm a lot more confident today than I was then. And at the time, I didn't uh, really want anyone knowing that it was me. So I, I guess I probably should have picked a different name other than Dan so when the period it was me, but oh well, that was what I chose with at the time. And uh, it was the summertime, so uh, I just finished my state exam at the time. And a couple of weeks later, I got a message from someone who I knew had been picking on me in uh, school. I recognized the account. And I at the time, I don't think they knew it was me, but I think it, after a while, I think I did know that they did know it was me. And they were asking me for help as to try and how as to how to try and find something. Uh, I think it was a birth search or someone, uh, but it was too, it was earlier than a hundred years. So I, you couldn't find it online. You'd have to order the certificate yourself. So I said that, said that back. And um, in response to that, because I couldn't fulfill what I had been asked to do, I got a lot of abuse <laughs> uh, in return. And every single time I opened up Instagram or I opened up that meta business suite thing, um, that message, that last message before I blocked that person is still there. I. <laughs> I've blocked him, I deleted the chat message is still there. I don't know why. But part of me thinks it was a way of kind of kind of a bit of motivation for me to try and get out there and just kind of be myself and not kind of, you know, let other people get a hold on me as to what I'm allowed to talk about and what I'm not allowed to talk about. Um, but that's a kind of rambling off of it but yeah at the time i didn't really want to, anyone to know kind of that i was doing genealogy that i was interested in and i think that might be the mindset of some young people and you know the whole idea of role models you know if they don't if, they, if there's no kind of young genealogists or something in the sphere that they see doing genealogy then they might think well is this really a hobby for me you know i'm uh, I might be in my teen years, or I might be in my early twenties, or something. You know, I don't see many people do my uh, do genealogy that are my age. I usually see them way older. If kind of you know young people see kind of someone at their own age doing it, they might kind of think, oh, maybe there's something I can do after all, and it is. And also, you know, I think. I think the easiest way to put this is, you know, we study the past and we kind of, you know, you know, there's a set way on how to do something, be it find a certificate in Ireland, in Bahola, in Mayo, you know, there's a set process of what you go through. And I think for some people, there's, in their minds, there's a set process on what they should do. And it their mindset might be there's only that way there's no other way and you know for example if a young genealogist might share you know a bit of feedback they're not going to go like oh that's stupid and then disregard it completely 
and you know it is it's say if a young gene just um suggested um an idea to the society on how to improve something and they kind of and it's the a young gene that they have and it kind of made you feel oh well i wonder um what we could do to get young people uh into the society and then that young gene artist was kind of thinking i just gave you ideas you know take it or leave it sort of thing and they're left thinking well they're asking why why don't they even consider at least uh what i've just suggested um and that's what i mean by two-way street because older genealogists is something that they can offer to young genealogists be it knowledge be it help be, be it taking a photo of uh a headstone an old headstone and uh sending it to them or putting it on finding ways so that they can see it there i don't know and young genealogists is something that we, we can offer. we we young genealogists are something that we can offer older genealogists and that could be you know i could help um for one of the societies i'm in i could help admin the a discord server or a facebook group you know some people want to try and get involved they can and that's kind of one way that um people might try and do things um sorry i lost my train of thought again um so i guess kind of any final thoughts that i have are kind of young genealogists want to do genealogy you know they want to try and help advance the field help maintain the field because you know if young genealogists aren't given support the, the the living the eternal flame of genealogy won't be eternal after all because all the kind of people doing genealogy would have died out or you know the interest wouldn't have caught on uh because of you know kind of a gate if you will put around genealogy um and that'll only be detrimental to how so to the kind of population of the genealogy community around the world and you know i think some people need to realize not all i'm saying by no means all um but i think some people need to realize that you know they're not going to be around forever and no one's going to be around here. so kind of you know the sooner people kind of some uh, the sooner some people kind of accept that and kind of they're like okay well we need to try and do something to try and bring young genealogists into the field bring them into the society just do something to help them is i think probably the benef the most beneficial thing you can do um as for as for specifics of what can be done i mean if you see some if you see someone on twitter or on facebook you know tell try and help them if you can or if you're on twitter if you if you know someone that does a certain thing be photo identification or culinary uh genealogy sorry culinary genealogy food history that sort of thing or irish genealogy french genealogy catch my dress out clear this one um because i just keep rambling sorry um you know it, if you see someone that you can help help them because i'm sure pro probably somewhere down the line when you're there in that position needing help on something that you don't have an idea about that person if they are if they specialize in that they might come and help you back as kind of a favor and you know that that that's kind of why that's kind of i think the main reason or the, sorry, the main method of how you can build a bridge between generations and that's interacting and just being as helpful as possible be it on TikTok, be it on instagram facebook twitter anything that has some kind of community functioning on there that's genealogy related reddit that's a really underestimated platform that i really need to look into more um you know it'll only be beneficial 
and that that's probably without instead of repeating myself i will cut myself there uh, uh because uh, i could just ramble on for the next uh uh 20 minutes about the same point again and again when there is no need so uh hopefully out of out of that presentation i made some sort of sense and if I did and you want to keep up with me, these are my channels and email is there as well, although on my screen I'm covering it at the bottom. Um, so all my bit, all my uh, social channels are there. And I just want to say before I do the Q&A, um, if anyone has a question that isn't answered or they have a follow-up thought that they want to share with me or talk with me about, please do. Uh, my DMs are open on everything, so please message me and I'll get back to you. Uh, as soon as I can. So, thank you, everyone, for listening. That was that was great. Uh, you had a lot of uh, really great uh, comments in the chat. A couple people's uh, one person said specifically, "I want to read this one particular comment," which I thoroughly enjoyed. Daniel is a fine young man. Glad glad he has taken up the sword to get it accomplished. Which. Yeah. Um, so we do have a couple questions in here. Let me just kind of quickly go through some of these, or not quickly, we have plenty of time. Um, the first one I'm seeing, hello, Daniel. I 100% agree on the Facebook and Twitter situation. Very active place for both. Where do you see YouTube playing a role in the connection between older and younger, older and newer generations? Um, YouTube specifically, I don't think will be kind of, you know, a community related platform because, you know, it's very much you upload a video and if people do have a conversation, it's going to be in the comments and, yeah. you know, things can get lost or things can get pulled, you know, people might delete their account and obviously that account will be, or that comment will be deleted. I think, Genia, uh, YouTube, because I'm playing around with it at the moment, um, you know, it's very, very good, uh, you know, because I'm sure, you know, we, be it in our daily lives somewhere, you know, we've used YouTube to kind of go like, how do I, how do I do this? You know, because yeah. um, uh, for a project infant that I'm working on at the moment, I'm using Excel. And, yeah. uh, you know, I usually despise Excel and spreadsheets. If there are any firm spreadsheet lovers, please don't uh, come at me. Um, but, uh, you know, I have uh, often find myself looking on YouTube for how-tos on how to oh, yeah. do certain things in Excel and just how to do things and you know i'm going to eventually have a series on my channel which is going to be kind of the basics of our genealogy you know how do you how do you use our genealogy.ie how do you use the our census website how do you use i'll eventually clear myself up on it griffith's valuation and yeah. how do you use the mli registers that sort of thing and you know I, again i'm sorry to go back to my first point i don't think it'll be kind of you know a necessarily conversational type of platform if that's what you're asking uh but more so an educational platform yeah it i feel like youtube is kind of like the the free classroom for like the world great so what else we got here so some one person said but in reality what are the odds the young people will even get interested in genealogy until they're older it seems that Early in life, most people are understandably focused on their own development and career, not the past or future generations. And that's, and that it's only when they begin to experience new generations being added, maybe having their own children, for example, and losing the older generation that they might even be interested in genealogy. Before you answer this, do you mind if I kind of quickly share my, how I became interested in genealogy? So this will be brief. I was probably in elementary school when I became interested in genealogy. And that was because I had an aunt who has been a genealogist for longer than I've been alive. And she and my dad were talking about my great grandfather from Ireland and, and the whole long dramatic story for the family about how he was dumped at an industrial school in Dublin. Uh, his mother moved to New Orleans, paid money to have his sister sent to New Orleans, but left him there. And then as an adult, he moves to New Orleans. And my great-grandfather, his mother, his sister, they all lived in the same city, but none of them would speak to each other. That type of like 
Mama, it got me interested. Like, what? There's more to the story. And then, as a student of history, I became interested in big historical events as well. But then, wondering, well, where does the ordinary person fit in? Where does my family fit in? So, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's always tied to when, you know, to new life or death. But what do you think, Daniel? Um, well, I think, um, well, you reminded me of another point, and you might be very, very surprised as to how many young people there actually are doing genealogy. I'm, in a, I'm just actually going to get the correct number, but uh, I'm in a Discord server um, for young genealogists aged 13 to 25, and there are I'm just about to see the number, 263 people in that server. So that is 263 young people doing genealogy between the ages of 13 and 25. And also Reddit was another place I mentioned briefly. There is so many on there. It seems to be Discord and Reddit seems to be a massive thing. And that's another thing when you're building that bridge, you know, you have to sometimes go a mile of it and just kind of you know go to someone to to appeal to someone you have to kind of go into their playground as well instead of trying to get them to come to you because if you try and do a discord server for your society or something uh you know young people might join that and go okay this is actually kind of nice and you know i use discord on so like daily or re fairly regularly or something um that sort of thing um, but honestly, I think, and that's another idea, you know, the fact that, you know, you, you're thinking that, you know, young people might necessarily be interested, you, I guarantee you, if you saw those servers, you would be surprised as to how many people do genealogy. And that's the thing, because, and also, you know, I'm, a, I, I, I very much put myself out there to about 5,000 people on Twitter, you know, I, <laughs> Um, I, you know, I've gone public with myself. Some people don't necessarily want to do that. And, you know, some people are more open to putting themselves out there. Some people are thinking, mm, I don't really want to. And, you know, the answer kind of respect that too. But, you know, I think majority of young genealogists, you know, don't openly put on their Twitter account bio, I'm interested in genealogy or something like that. And they could be so like what I like to call sometimes a silent lurker. That's the kind of like, you know, they, they like to see what's happening, but they don't necessarily engage. And I I I I I, I, I don't know where I was going on that point, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, but uh, you know, like you know, young genealogists just might necessarily want to go public on platforms, and they just might want to keep to themselves in more kind of closed communities, like a Discord server. Because a Discord server ain't public. To get in there, you have to physically get a invite or a link to it. So that's how you kind of join it. So you can't physically go on Google, type in "genealogy Discord server," and look at like a public view of yeah. the server. It is kind of closed off and confined in that sense. Um, so, yeah, I think oh, that's... Wow. I just saw in the chat that somebody said that in Israel, children do a family tree project in seventh grade. So we have, I know we often have a number of educators in attendance for these programs, some of which retired, some of which aren't. For those of you who are not, or maybe you have, you know people who are teachers, Tell them to maybe incorporate some type of a family history project. It could be oral history. Yes, and uh, that's actually responding to a recent uh, comment from Regina. Uh, she just said, my family is not doing the work, but are interested. How do I guard their attention? And that's the thing. You know, if you absolutely go on an overhaul and you just give them right, this is my 10 books of research on John Smith born in 1780. You know, then I'm going to go like, uh, yeah. where the heck do I start? And, you know, feeding it to them in micro pieces, you know, for example, if you have it, great. If you don't, don't worry. There are many other ways you can do it. But for example, I have in my possession, it's one of the few pieces of tangible family history that I have. 
It is a, a coin that my maternal great grandparents had on their marriage day, and it was engraved uh, in Irish. So it says, Paltry go away alone, August, um, Courtney, uh, Courtney Arricker, which is mm. pa Patrick Whelan and Catherine Traher, and their date of marriage, which is the 14th of January 1921. But that coin is 102 years, oh, sorry, 101 years old. Um, and being able to tell the story of that coin, for example, you know, uh, this coin was, you know, they had engraved on their wedding day, and then when, you know, my great grandmother died in 1941, and my great grandfather in 1986, big gap, I know, um, you know, it was passed down to my grandmother, who then made it into a necklace, and she actually did wear it a number of times. And then when my grandmother died in 1994, she passed it on to my mother, and my and we obviously have it in my possession now. So kind of, and just being able to, you know, tell the story of, you know, those people, you know, kind of think, oh, that's kind of cool. That's what I think. And what Elizabeth said as well, although she's yeah. this way on yeah. the screen. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, oral history, you know, it, and sometimes, and I think sometimes it can be discounted to the source, but it can very much be a very useful one because, um, you know, there are things that a grand aunt of mine said, who's now unfortunately uh, passed away, but there are things that she said that confirmed, you know, re that just kind of, you know, was the bread and butter to kind of the records that I had already found. So, you know, uh, or oral history can really be a trigger because, you know, I grew up with only one grandparent and I would hear stories from him about my great, about his mother, uh, who was a primary school teacher. And, you know, I'd hear stories about him, you know, what it, because he was born in 1932, he would have been, uh, so he would have been, you know, a young boy during the war, so he would have remembered it. And, you know, he would have been, uh, you know, what what was it like during the war? What was school like? What was, It's these little things, because, you know, yeah. it would have changed, you know, because school, the way school was back then, you know, it was not going to be like n now, you know. Yeah. So, you know, hearing it from a historical point of view passed down, you know, it can be rather enticing. Yeah. And then it might kind of leave, oh, what, what, what was he like? Because one thing I always like knowing is people's personalities. Oh, yeah. So I always kind of ask, I'd always like to ask, you know, because uh, my grandparents, my paternal grandparents both died uh, before my memory. One of them died before I was born, the other one I was one and a half. And my other cousins who are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, um, you know, I'd always ask them, you know, what was man and granddad like? And, you know, they tell me stories about, you know, oh, well, we always used to go around their house for uh, their party, you know, oh, Nana always hated riding in a car and, you know, we kind of get a bit scared and uh, because, you know, they weren't, it was new to them, you know, my grandmother never owned a car, they never drove. Uh, so it was kind of, you know, alien to them when, you know, they started getting rides in them. So it, it's just kind of these little bits that really entice them, at least for me. I mean, I, I'm sure if you met other young genealogists, you could probably ask them the same thing and just see. But uh, no, cool. I, 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 it's it's quite fun well a lot of people in the in the chat just us bringing up these oral history projects that people would do in school or not do in school a lot of people are like oh yeah that's how i got interested in genealogy i i talked to my grand grandparents and like had to ask them a set of questions in elementary school that's how i got interested Th things like that don't necessarily change uh yeah technology changes but you know human nature the need the, the, the need to just know more to be curious that's not something that changes that's great thank you for those comments dan um and your comment about you know don't give them this like massive like 50 volume set of research is actually i'm glad that you brought that up because someone did mention in their question saying that they have all this research that they turned into book form that they gave to state and cultural libraries and their local library and they share things to various websites 
And they said, maybe in a hundred years, a descendant of my family will find you to continue your comment. And it's, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So they want to know, like, thing, what do you think? Yeah. And one thing I do want to say is I don't want to, I don't want to appear as though I'm saying that, uh, books are kind of 10 pages or, no. or 10 books about someone. No, do uh, it. Do it. It, it. it just might not be something that I want to look at first. I might want to hear yeah. more about the person. And, you know, um, for example, on my mother's side, my paternal grandparents' side, you know, I have a, my granduncle did a book on uh, the O'Clearys uh, as far as he could go back. So he went back to something now. As far as I put in, I've only put in, so like who I've been able to confirm with records, which is about the 1834 or five. Um, so that's about as far back as I've gone. But, um, you know, it still includes some bits about living people, you know, and it, and it was a book, it was a private book in the sense that, you know, it was only given to family, it was published for the family, it wasn't published for, you know, public consumption, that sort of thing, it's still the people, you know, it was just like say, oh, well, so-and-so's living here and so-and-so's living there, so, you know, it might be a bit invasive there, so obviously not for public consumption, but when it came to filling in the gaps, you know, because you know, there was a lot of question marks on that side. So that book really did help. So books do help. I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not, um, yeah. you know, um, kind of saying, oh, well, they're not helpful at all. And also I think, because I did see someone point out, you know, I think, you know, junior edu education is good to an extent until you have someone who is adopted. For instance, in my family, there is someone who was an adoptee, mm -hmm. and trying. Someone to, mentioned know, approach, that. Someone yeah, mentioned that. Trying to, chat, approach, yeah. trying to approach them about genealogy and something might necessarily be, uh, you know, um, um, might, might necessarily be kind of the top of their kind of to do list. But uh, you know, it'll it'll depend on the person. Some might kind of think. Oh yeah, I don't mind talking about it, and then others might kind of be like, "No, I don't really want to." So, I mean, it, it's a very much dynamic situation in how you approach it. I think in all aspects of genealogy, um, you, you have to have a certain degree of empathy, uh, especially when you're doing oral history interviews with various people, because you never know what can just really bring up bring up a lot of trauma, and. Um, you know, some people might not want to necessarily ask those questions, and but also some people, they might just be like, my adoptive parents are my parents. And um, my colleague, Melissa, had said in the chat that when we get groups of students to the genealogy center, we tell them they can either focus on their bloodline, so their biological family line, or their heart line, so where their heart is. So it, it all kind of depends. So we have a couple of minutes left. Uh, I know I see a number of you were using the Q&A box for just putting lovely comments. So I'm gonna read some of those comments or summarize some of those comments so we can get back to some final questions. Um, okay. Oh, I love this. Daniel, you and your cohort of young genealogists are inspiring. Thank you for your work. Your best suggestion for opening the world of genealogy to younger generations is to simply listen and be helpful. I love that. It's the core of any community. Thank you for sharing that, Barbara. Um, we have somebody else who said, you know, thank you, Daniel. Great talk. I follow you on Twitter, and I also tweet for a local geolog genealogical society in Missouri. Our society has... This is more a question. Our society has just started a reduced price youth membership to encourage younger genealogists to join. That's great. Um, we're here, we're on Facebook. Oh yeah, youth or student memberships of things. It's great because, you know, we. I've been a broke student. I'm sure many of you have been a broke student. And it's, so it's nice to be able to offer that. Um, this person said that they're working on short videos for YouTube and they were wondering what your thoughts are on LinkedIn. Oh, uh, LinkedIn. I feel like more Americans uh, use LinkedIn. I mean, I use LinkedIn for mainly the connections because, you know, I, yeah. I, 
I mean, LinkedIn as a social network wouldn't have been my first, like, um, you know, go. I mean, I'm on there. You know, you can just find me, Daniel Loftus. That's yeah. my name on there. I mean, I, I've, I've never posted. Although I did actually try to post about Project Infinite when I released it, and uh, well, let's just say my internet was being a right old uh, pain and decided not to post it. So. Uh, Technically, I did have one post, but it never went up. Uh, but I mean, LinkedIn can be helpful, you know, for, you know, sharing posts. It, again, it's sort of like Facebook in the sense that you can still post, you can still post links, videos, pictures, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know is probably the answer to give to that. I mean, I, I probably have to, um, uh, excuse me, I probably have to experiment with it a little more. Jade from Twitter said you did bad. Be confident. You owned it. You did not Great. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, this is a good question. I think if we encourage our youth in all that they do, it should help. Uh, and this person was saying that they have a sixth grader in, the, in their group. Uh, she has turned her genealogy 4-H projects and taken first and second place, first place two years in a row. Do you think that just in, just being encouraging is important? Oh, totally. Because yeah. I mean, um, I, um, oh, I, because early on when I started get starting Daniel's genealogy, I. I uh, had a blog. I don't really blog much anymore unless I have something I really want to get off my chest and it's too long for a Twitter thread. Then I'll use um, something. Like, you have different platforms you can use. You have WordPress, you have Weebly. You... Although the one I use is Medium because it allows you to actually listen to kind of the post. Uh, so it kind of is a text-to-speech. So kind of it just list, you can just listen to the post. Um, so I, I like Medium for that. But it... Absolutely. Encouragement is a massive thing because I think, you know, and even just feedback, because I mean, on a uh, post uh, that I've done, you know, even if it's just a one liner saying, you know, great post, I really found it interesting. Uh, it, it it can mean the world to them. Yeah. It means, right, someone's actually taking an interest in what I do. Oh, my God. And uh, <laughs> yeah. It it, 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 the only thing it can probably give is, uh, you know, determination and just kind of, you know, motivation to keep going. Yeah. Like, you know, some people can just sometimes feel that they're yelling into the void, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, they have just like a couple of comments of encouragement. They might kind of think, okay, so I'm not doing this for nothing. You know, people are seeing me, you know, they are seeing what I post, that sort of thing. But uh, no, I do, I do think um, it's, um yeah i do i i do i think it's very much important right so we have time for one more question if you're up for it dan uh so they were asking about using twitter for genealogy they asked us to show how to use twitter for genealogy um okay. we don't have quite um, time for a demo but do you have some like no. kind of quick tips on like um, things to look for in Twitter or you know, the hashtags? Okay. Well, I am looking to do hopefully down the line a uh, presentation and demo with on how to use Twitter for genealogy. So, if you are in any of those channels that are currently up on the screen, please do follow me there, and I will uh, work on developing something over the summer or maybe September. Um, on how to use Twitter for genealogy because it is. Um, we would love to have um, you back for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind that. But uh, yeah. no, it's definitely a thought. Uh, as for quick tips, I mean, hashtags I tend to look at because, you know, some people might kind of at, put out an appeal for help, you know, um, you know, oh, where do I find this? Hashtag genealogy. And then I go looking down the hashtag to see if there's any. Um, uh people that are asking for help and i retweet them because i have the audience and i want to repay the community back for what they gave me and that was advice help and support 
So if I can, you know, repay that back and sharing, that's where you can hopefully get them the answer. Nine times out of ten, something happens uh, on Twitter. Uh, you know, it, it it makes me feel better because, you know, it, it means if that person's got an answer and then they can keep going. Um, you know, uh, hashtags like genealogy, family history, um, uh, genealogy for all is one that I have, but it's basically gone extinct at the moment. I'll have to kind of get that going again. Um, as for someone did mention else, you know, ancestry, uh, hashtag ancestry hour as like that's a good way to pay it forward if you're kind of trolling yeah, that, the hashtag that, ancestry hour, yeah, and that's a really uh good uh start. Um, that that's a really good starting point if you really want to get into the uh kind of community. If you can't, of course, you can use Twitter to schedule a tweet for cry for help or something, uh, and just put it uh somewhere between uh, yeah. 7 to 8 o'clock UK time, which is 2 to 3 p.m. Yeah. Eastern. Uh, I'm during I this have, program. I, I, yeah, during the, actually, yeah, during, during this program. program. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you ever want any uh, uh, kind of help on things, I do recommend going there because uh, you, you you get an awful lot of exposure in the sense of when you're trying to get a question answered or something like that. It's It's a good place. Right. But uh, just, I, I will just, just repeating again, sorry. Uh I will try and do uh, a presentation on that. So do stick close to kind of one of the channels up there and I will try and post something about it if I'm doing a uh, presentation on that. Great. Right. So thank you again, Daniel. Now if any of you would like a copy of the chat, um feel free to send us an email. Our email is genealogy at acpl.info, which I'm about to stick that in the chat. Um, now, I had mentioned earlier that this program is being recorded and once we edit it, it will end up on our YouTube channel. So definitely check back there uh, at some point to find the recording of this. So thank you again, Daniel. And thanks everybody for, for joining us. For I think all of you shared a lot of really interesting thoughts, uh, shared your own ideas. And I, I love how collaborative the chat can be during these programs. And thank you, for Dan, for just sh sharing with us. Um, I'll happily come back again once I have the Twitter thing sorted. Great. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. And have a good day.